What a sunny individual he is. Yes, as you can see, the sun is peering through this fellow's... Well, character model. Anyway, point is, welcome back to A Clash of Kings 7.1 Reformers, and we are going to be continuing our quest line here in the north with the Wildling Invasion. So, what now? Mind your tone. I am the king's friend, you know, and the lord of Harren Hall. That Rob Stark was insolent as well, I'm sure, like his father. And look where it got him. Consider that a warning. While the savages roam beyond the wall, we need to focus on our defenses. So I've sent for all the men from Eastwatch by the Sea to join us. But Cotter Pike hasn't returned any of our ravens. Hoping we'll be overrun so he can get elected Lord Commander, no doubt. But I'm acting Lord Commander now. Ah, that blind maester says you're good in a fight, Elias. Are you good with words? Can you convince Cotter Pike to bring his men here? <laughs> oh, how... How you don't know how I'm bad with words. Oh, it's lovely. Mm. All right, so we <laughs> we now have to talk to Carter Pike, who is Eastwatch by the Sea. Isn't that over there? Yeah, there we go. That's, that's what I thought. All right, so hopefully he's going to be there, and hopefully he's not going to be running around. And, uh, well, I'm a bit worried, really, because as you can see, I haven't really had any time to kind of restore my forces because I saw this guy, and I was like... Ooh, we should probably speak to him immediately because I don't really want to lose his positioning, if you know what I mean. I'm actually going to go into the hall here just in case he's actually here and I don't, I, I can't see it. Doesn't seem like that's the case, so I will have to rest here for a bit of time. Hopefully Cotter Pike is going to, oh, hello. Wow. Oh, for some reason that seems to happen almost all the time to me. It seems like the... Uh, people I need to speak to just appear out of nowhere at the exact right moment. So that's fantastic. Anyway, let's speak to him. And, uh, yes, Janos Jan Slint sent me, yes, if I could say his name. That sniveling worm? Yes, Harmoon has told me about his letters. Lord of Haranhal? Ha! He's as much a lord as Harmoon is sober. There will be an election when all of this is over, but Janos Slint will never be Lord Commander. Tell him that. And tell him that there's no such thing as acting Lord Commander. <laughs> ah, I see. So we are we are carrying messages back and forth between these two fellows that absolutely love each other, as we have no doubt seen multiple times. They really do enjoy each other's company. And uh, we're going to be going in and speaking to him as well. Okay, so I've got to be really careful here because it appears as though in, uh, in A Clash of Kings, if you go into a castle and it's a neutral faction you can technically declare war by besieging that straight off the bat which is very very ooh, a bit risky anyway pike says no the bastard and you you're in league with him i'll wager trying to usurp my command i won't have it i was commander of the gold cloaks and lord of harren hall i have the king's ear you lie through your bastard's teeth well i will not suffer it i will not you might have fooled this crippled maester, but not Janos Lind. Oh no, Janos Lind does not swallow lies so easily. Did you think my skull was stuffed with cabbage? <laughs> what? <laughs> well, you know, when they start speaking in the third person, there's uh, definitely something a bit uh, a bit off there. But there you go. Go and scurry off to your blind master, Elias. Uh, okay, so, well, thanks very much. Uh, <laughs> Ah, uh, thank you. Okay, so where do I have to go now? Oh, okay, so I, I now have to go to uh, Maester Eamon in Castle Black, which is here, actually. So we have to go and take a walk around the courtyard, because I'm pretty sure that he's there in front of that little... Uh, in front of that little structure. I think he... is he? Ah, uh, yeah, I think he's over here, actually. I think I remember that he was over here somewhere. Or not in this case, actually. I'm a bit surprised. Maybe he's on the wall? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think he's actually going to be on the wall because it appears as though he's actually not there. So let us... Ooh, no. I do not want to enter the lands beyond the wall. Thank you very much. So I have actually done that, which is bad. Let's just say that. That is... A, that is that, wow, that's actually really cool, though, that they have actually placed a an actual wall here so you you have to go through castle black to get to that point anyway uh it seems like mm, maybe i have to go into the lord no yes into the lord's hall there he is oh, okay so he's actually not waiting outside anymore a grim task elias the wildlings outnumber us 100 to 1 and man's raider was never one to lack for resolve what has happened 
Lord Slint has asked young Snow to talk to Mance. A parlay, he calls it. I doubt very much that it is the right course. Why parlay when you are assured of victory? I think Slint has darker motives than that. Despite all his talk of being acting Lord Commander, Slint does have his rights. I am a maester, sworn to serve and counsel. It's not my place to question the decisions when they have been made, and with our master at arms being behind him, Slint has the final say in what happens from here on. Oh dear. John will talk to the king beyond the wall. What shall happen from there will happen, but I would rest easier if I knew he had a companion on this quest. Join him, Elias, and watch his back. Well, I will attempt to do so. Maester Eamon. <laughs> Uh, okay, so let's just wait here for some time because I'm a bit worried that we are going to get absolutely murdered if I am not full HP. So let me see. What else do I want to spec in here? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I really don't. Let's go for some more strength, I suppose. A little bit more athletics is probably going to be pretty useful. And we'll just go for some one-handed and so on, and we'll see how that goes there. All right, so I guess uh, travel beyond the wall. Where Where is he, though? Wait a minute, let's actually just take a look here. Oh, I have to talk to... Oh, okay. I actually have to talk to Jon Snow in there as well. Okay, well. I, I wish they'd all be there when I need to speak to them, you know? But I suppose that's maybe not possible. Ah, oh, there we go. There's Jon Snow. Sometimes there's no happy choices, or honourable ones, Elias. Only a less grievous one. It was honourable to stay here while Rob marched south, but it was not a happy choice. And they killed him. What now? There's no shame in fear, my father told me. What matters is how we face it. But what if what you fear is dishonor? We go to meet the king beyond the wall, and we serve the realm, and we keep to our vows. Very well. I see. Mm-hmm. Yes, that is exactly what we will do. Trudging through the tunnels of Castle Black, you and John enter the frosty lands beyond the wall once again. The air is cold, and a slight fog lies over the tree line, visible in the distance. Continue to the wildling camp. Following a small track, you reach the outskirts of the wildling encampment. Cooking fires emit a greasy fog, and everywhere are signs of a people on the move. This isn't merely an encampment for an army. As you get closer to the camp, you are met by two thens, who take John to see Mance Raider, while you are left to your own devices. You are in the middle of Mance Raider's camp. Explore the encampment. Okay, that is exactly what we will do. And we will have a very fun time doing it because I, I no doubt will make any kind of misstep and be killed instantly. Let's see and hope that that is not indeed the case. Ah, hello, Torment. How do you grow your beard? A crow? Another one. I had feared we'd seen the last of Jon Snow and here comes yet one more. Who are you? Oh, I don't know. Yes. Before you stands Tormund, giant Spain, tall talker, horn blower, and breaker of ice. And here also Tormund, Thunderfist, husband to bears, the mead king of ruddy all, speaker to gods, and father of hosts. Oh, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you for that introduction. I appreciate it. And maybe we will see a couple of others. And I'm actually wondering whether there's going to be a half-hidden chest as well. Ah, here is Harmer Dogshead. A weak Southling, go away. <laughs> well, that was short and sweet, wasn't it? Or short and not so sweet, but anyway. Let's see if I can... Oh, who is this? Hello there. Once a horse is broken to the saddle, any man can mount him. What? Once a beast... Once a beast's been joined to, to a man... Oh, there we go. We, we, we've successfully explored it, apparently. Any skin changer can slip inside and ride him. Oral was withering inside his feathers, so I took the eagle for my own. But the joining works both ways. Oral lives inside me now, whispering how much he hates Jon Snow, and I can soar above the wall and see with the eagle eyes. Maybe I should have given that guy a, a slightly crazier voiceover, but, oh well, whatever. I'm not particularly good at that, am I? Anyway, point is, we're now done. Oh, uh, yes, we are now done. Let's continue. Oh, what is going here? Suddenly a lone warhorn is heard in the distance. You turn towards the tree line where you see a mass of men clad in black drawing arrows. Soon wildlings around you are struck and down by a rain of black-fletched broadheads. Running for cover, you hear distant shouting. As it gets closer, you start to hear the hoofbeats of horses. 
Suddenly a large force of mounted knights can be seen charging over the hills, bearing red and yellow banners, embroidered with a flaming heart. Let us join the attackers. Are we joining the attackers? Okay. We're joining the attackers by the looks of things. Okay. That's absolutely fine. Whoa. These guys are going to get murdered. The, they are going to get murdered like no one's business because let's face it. Oh, hello. Well, well, yes. Let's face it. The wildlings are not exactly the greatest when it comes to their armaments. But I am ext I'm actually kind of worried here. Okay, so we've got Dragonstone helping us out here. And we have a bunch of other people too. So that's rather nice. I have leveled up. That's pretty good too. Wow, these guys die so quickly. I kind of feel a bit bad for... M well, not murdering them. Because technically I'm not murdering them. Because I'm using a blunt weapon. So technically they're just getting knocked unconscious. But I do feel a bit bad about this. Because, well, even though the Wildlings are technically our enemies... I feel bad about it because they are, well, they have primitive weapons. Primitive weapons, not incredibly good armor and so on and so forth. But I am going to get some pretty decent experience for participating in this battle, so I suppose that's all good. And who knows, maybe one day I will be these fellows and have a, an amazing horse and some rather nice, <laughs> and some rather nice armor. Okay, so the new Lord Commander, part one, that is what we are taking here now. And we are victorious. Okay, very good. Okay, so let's have a look. Uh, whoa, nice fur bundles, actually, and some cheap cheese. Okay. Staring through the smoke, you can make out the shapes of a few wildlings still fighting off in the distance. But slowly the sound of clashing arms disappear. And the sound of clashing legs appear. <laughs> I'm waiting for the applause. No, no applause? No, no. It's just crickets. It's just crickets and then a... a uh, Tumbleweed comes on, you know, flying by. All right. As the air clears, you look over the field of battle. The dead are everywhere. The rest fled through the forest. While it's too cold to catch fire properly, the arrows of the attackers have set fire to small parts of the camp, and the stench of burned leather is everywhere. Through the smoke, another wedge of armored riders appear on barded horses. Floating above them are two large banners, royal standards as big as sheets a yellow one with long pointed tongues showing a flaming heart, and another like beaten gold with a black stag prancing and rippling in the wind. As the riders charge past you, you start to walk back to the wall. Right, so we're back at the wall now, and let's have a look at the quest. So we have to speak to Maester Eamon, right? Hmm, interesting. Okay, so I have to, yeah, I still have to be super careful not to click on that Besiege Castle button, because you know how that goes. Yeah, I've done that before. Not in this mod, but, you know, sometime. A choosing is never certain, Elias. Sometimes the gods will see fit to surprise us. I think they've done so today. Though I wonder if they did not act through a vessel. What has happened? We have a new Lord Commander, elected as number 998 from a line stretching back to the Age of Heroes. I have served under four Lord Commanders, Elias. Brendan Rivers disappeared during a ranging, and Lord Commander Corgyle died of an arrow wound. Lord Mormont died by the hands of his own men. I pray that Lord Snow will find a kind of fate, though I very much doubt it. Oh, so apparently Jon Snow is our uh, Lord Commander now. That's cool. Serving can be a hard burden, but I dare say that leading is another matter entirely. My grandfather once likened it to juggling scorpions while having to stroke a sleeping lion. Oh, that's very poetic. You are also a leader of men, Elias. Allow me to give you a piece of counsel. The same counsel that I once gave my brother when we parted for the last time. He was three and thirty when the great council chose him to mount the Iron Throne. A man grown with sons of his own, yet in some ways still a boy. Egg had an innocence to him, a sweetness we all loved. Kill the boy within you, I told him, the day I took ship for the wall. It takes a man to rule, an Aegon, not an egg. Kill the boy and let the man be born. Only the gods can tell what will happen now, Elias, but I fear that we are quickly approaching hard times. The cold winds are rising. Indeed, I see. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, so let's have a look. So we, okay, so we, we did speak to him and, hmm, I, do we, do we speak to him again? Ah, there we go, there we go. That's what we needed to do. As you leave the common room, you see the room... Uh, you see the room of the Night's Watch. No. 
<laughs> okay, let's try that again. As you leave the common room, you see the men of the Night's Watch arguing in the yard, a group of men gathered around Janos Slint, shouting loudly. Maybe they'll slap him in the face. Soon the shouting turns to violence. Oh, there we go. <laughs> As one of Janos Slint's toadies reaches for his sword. Ooh, it's a little bit more, you know, fatal than a... Slap, slap in the face. Anyway, the violence is short-lived, however, as a burly man in a big fur cloak quickly knocks the man out. Oh, there we go. We do have some fisticuffs. All right. So we completed that quest. And we have advanced to level 15. And I believe that's actually it. That appears to be it. So I'm actually going to go in because now, obviously, Jon Snow is the Lord Commander. Hello. And, uh, well, technically, I could join the Night's Watch now if I wanted to, but I don't think I will. Do you have any tasks? I certainly intend to pass by the Shadow Tower. Mm, I would love to. Yes, I would absolutely love to, Jon Snow. I will do that for you, even though I am not an errand boy by any means. But I will do it nevertheless, because it will give me a little bit of relation with these fellows. And who knows when that might come in handy. There we go. Our relation. Oh, our relation has already increased because we actually came to him when he was having a feast. I bring a message from Lord Jon Snow, and there we go. All right, that's fantastic. That means, I think, we might even be able to accomplish the tournament at nine stars. All right, so I think it's probably about time that we upgrade our club, because even though the club is actually really, really decent for such a cheap weapon, I mean, it's only got 20 blunt damage, but it does have the ability to crush through blocks. It is a bit unbalanced, obviously, and it does have a bonus against shields, but its speed rating and weapon reach are perfectly acceptable stats, and personally, for an early game weapon, I think it's pretty good. I actually think it's pretty good. And if it did have a little bit more blunt damage, I'd probably continue using it. But for the moment, what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap it out for this weapon, which I have just purchased here, or I will be purchasing for 1,500 coins. That's going to give me 39 cutting damage, pretty significant speed rating, and so on and so forth. And hopefully, if we are required to use our own weapons in the tournament at 9 stars, I can't quite remember the quest from when I've done it previously, but if we are going to use our own weapons, then this is going to be great. So, before we go into 9 stars, I have obviously just advanced in level 215, so I think it would probably make sense for us to get two more points into strength, get some more power strike, get some more iron flesh, make ourselves into much more of a beast than we already are, even though we're not really a beast. I mean, I haven't had a very good weapon for quite some time, so I suppose that might be a bit of an issue. But anyway, we're going to go in here and see if we can participate in the tournament. The tawny grounds have been set up between a shallow hill and the walls of the castle. Already merchants and entertainers have set up shop in anticipation of the influx of knights, squires, and ladies-in-waiting coming to attend the tawny. The area surrounding the castle of Nine Stars is very fertile, great shaggy sheep grazing the fields and farmhands being busy bringing in the harvest. To the north of the castle is a forest that spans many leagues and to the south is fertile valleys filled with fruit orchards and grazing fields for cows. And I actually think what we're going to do, because I seem to remember that this quest is quite long, we're going to leave the tawny for the next episode. I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.